Just a general note, Kratos does not like it when you call him Weirdy Beardy. Hello YouTube, I'm Darkest Simon 101 and welcome to another Darkest 101 review. Ladies and gentlemen, the next review requires no introduction. I think by this point in the God of War franchise, the gods of Olympus would get the point. You'd also think since Kratos has killed multiple gods, all three sisters of fate and handed Zeus's ass to him on a silver platter, nobody would be stupid enough to betray him. Well, you'd be wrong, as in God of War 3, Kratos takes his will for vengeance and turns it into a one-man war against anyone dumb enough to stand in his way. Let's get right to it then. God of War 3. Now, I literally can't start this review without talking about the graphics. I mean, we all know by now that this was made for PS3 in the previous games of PS2, with the exception for Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta, which for PSP, but that's not what I'm talking about. I swear, I still haven't seen a PS4 game with graphics as good looking as these. The minute I started playing this game, I literally fell in love. This game is fucking beautiful. And I'm not saying that simply because it's drenched in blood and guts and gore. The game picks up exactly where God of War 2 left off, with Kratos riding on the back of Gaia as the Titans scale Olympus, Zeus and several other Olympians watching in horror. Now I'm not gonna lie, but I kinda didn't quite get who each of the gods were first time playing this game. And now I'm about to demonstrate for you all how much of a fucking moron I am. I thought Hades was Hephaestus, Poseidon was Hermes, Hermes was Apollo, Apollo was the fucking scenery because Apollo isn't in this game, and I really didn't get who Helios was until it was explicitly stated in the game. Look at me! I'm a big fat stupid head! As Gaia climbs Olympus, Poseidon leaps into the sea and brings the power of the ocean up to Olympus and starts plucking titans off one by one, pinning Gaia to the mountainside in the process. Kratos starts a battle with the overpowered Olympian, who claims that Atlantis shall be avenged. Oh yeah, God of War 3 likes to reference things that didn't happen in 1 and 2, but in Ghosts of Sparta and Chains of Olympus. So if you haven't played those games, you will be very confused, kinda like I was. While this isn't really a huge problem and is obviously a logical decision on the part of Santa Monica, it can sort of suck you out of the game when the characters reference something that, as far as you're concerned, hasn't actually happened. Barring that problem, Kratos fights Poseidon before he, launched by a power punch from Gaia, pulls Poseidon from his oceanic form. After a brief discussion, we have... <sighs> the best fucking quick time event I've ever had the pleasure to play. Okay, even though the boss battles in God of War 3 still end with quick time event, I take everything back about the quick time events in God of War 1 and 2. Because quite frankly, they have made these the most fucking epic deaths I have ever seen. I mean, what the hell happened? Where did this come from? Santa Monica's clearly up the in your face I'm going to kill you death styles in God of War 3. I mean, boss battles in previous God of War games and they were kind of cool quick times, but they were nothing. How the fuck can you forget Kratos gouging out Poseidon's eyes with his thumbs before snapping his neck? Not only is Poseidon's death one of the most gruesome and awesome I have ever seen in a video game, but the entire opening sequence of boss battle against Poseidon is one of the best opening sequences I have ever seen, or played. It's gripping, it's action packed, it's fucking amazing to watch as well as play, and it introduces the player to almost all the gameplay elements in God of War 3 seamlessly. 
It definitely beats out the Hydra in God of War and the Colossus in God of War 2 simply because of its sheer size. The battle with the Hydra was minuscule compared to this, and while you do fight your way across roads in the battle with the Colossus, here on the side of a fucking mountain doing war with titans and gods! So, in much the same way Ares died at the end of God of War, Poseidon's death is incredibly subtle and profound. Oh wait, no, this is Santa Monica we're talking about. Oh yeah, I just remembered that Poseidon's death causes the waters of the world to rise and rage out of control in a raging tsunami. Subtle. Anyway, Kratos climbs back onto Gaia and she takes him all the way to the top of Olympus, where they confront Zeus. Wait, sorry, Zeus. I have a Greek friend who finds that really, really annoying. So if you're watching this review, Heather, you're fucking welcome! What will you do, father? You can no longer hide behind the skirts of Athena. Athena is dead because of the rage that consumed you, Kratos. What more will you destroy? The hands of death could not defeat me. The sisters of fate could not hold me. And you will not see the end of this day. I will have my revenge! Excellent child! I will tolerate your insolence no more! Gaia. This guy is tearing apart the goddamn world in order to get revenge on the guy who killed him. And you want to get in his way? And not only that, double cross him and let him die. You mess with Kratos at this point, you get what you deserve. So, as is typical with God of War, Kratos lands in the underworld and is met with the spectral apparition of Athena, who claims to have transcended God and turned into something more profound, more powerful, and more knowledgeable. She then re-inspires Kratos to seek and destroy Zeus after explaining she can now see more than she did when she was alive. After swapping out Kratos' blades for a new and improved version in the Blades of Exile, she sends Kratos to escape the underworld in search of the Flame of Olympus. Along the way, he encounters the smith god, Hephaestus, imprisoned there by Zeus. Kratos then breaks his way into the house of Hades, where he quickly encounters the homeowner, ruler of the underworld, and god of the dead, Hades himself. Now, in God of War 1 and 2, we may have had some cool boss battles, and even the boss battle against Poseidon was fucking awesome. And yet, it's the battle of Hades. I will always remember from this game for some bizarre reason. Don't ask me why I prefer the Hades boss battle over Poseidon because I don't know the answer. Actually I'm fucking lying to you guys, I do know the answer and that's because Poseidon wasn't challenging. You can strike him so many times over and once you get the gist of what his attack patterns are like, it's very easy to dodge. With Hades, yeah he does telegraph his attacks but it's also very very difficult to dodge in time, especially when you're playing on hard difficulty like I was. And I died a lot fighting Hades because fuck it, he's challenging. Unlike Poseidon. Because he can't miss the god of the oceans when he's brought the oceans up to Olympus. If you miss, you're fucking blind. 
After battling Hades, Kratos takes his weapon, the claws of well, Hades, and uses them to rip the god's very soul from his body. As Hades dies, the damned of the underworld began to make their escape, as Kratos returns to Olympus via the Hyperion Gate and comes across Gaia climbing back up. Oh goody. So, like I said earlier, mess with Kratos at this point in the franchise and you get what you deserve. In Gaia's case, she deserves getting her hand severed from her arm and plummeting straight down to Tartarus, where gravity will do its sweet, sweet work. Enjoy the climb back up, bitch! Kratos then finds a catapult and uses it to upset Helios' chariot, causing him to crash and burn. When Kratos arrives, he pleads with him to spare his life, which doesn't really end well for Helios as Kratos rips his head from his shoulders with his bare hand. Wow. With Helios dead, black clouds fill the sky, blotting out the sun. As Kratos presses forward, he reaches the Chain of Balance, a large chain that descends from Olympus straight into the underworld. Aided by some thermal winds, Kratos ascends the Great Chain and reaches the caverns. The caverns mark both the halfway point of the chain and the center of the Great Labyrinth. As Kratos begins inadvertently assembling the labyrinth, he meets with Hermes, the messenger god. Look who it is! Kratos, the ghost of Sparta, the fallen god, the cursed mortal. To catch a fly from the ass of Zeus is not worth my time, Hermes. Kratos follows Hermes up the rest of the chain and enters the chamber of the flame of Olympus. Once there, Athena reveals to Kratos that by destroying the flame, Kratos will gain access to Pandora's box and with it the power to kill a god. The power to kill a god. Wait a fucking minute! He doesn't need Pandora's box! Kratos has already killed gods without the aid of Pandora's box. Look, I'll count them for you now. One, Persephone. Two, Poseidon. Three, Hades. And four, Helios. Technically, there are two more, I know, but I'm not counting Thanatos and Athena. Because A, he killed Fanatos when he himself was a god, and Athena he stabbed with the Blade of Olympus. Which Kratos still has, by the way. You would have thought the goddess of fucking wisdom would have noticed Kratos is on a god kill streak right about now. I mean, what more god? He's on a fucking care package. Hermes then reappears and leads Kratos on a merry little dance across Olympus before he injures himself, allowing Kratos to catch up and slice Hermes' legs clean off and take his boots. Friendly care package inbound. Hermes' body then explodes into a gigantic swarm of insects as Kratos then returns to the Chamber of the Flame and sets the chamber so that he may lift the labyrinth from where it lies in the caverns. However, the statues of the three judges down in the underworld hold the chain in place. You would have thought Zeus would have noticed some of this shit going on right about now. I mean, Kratos has killed, what, four gods at this point? Yeah, four gods. And nothing. Are the Titans really still that much of a threat? Zeus has to focus all of his attention on them? But as far as I've seen, the Titans haven't killed one Olympian in these games. And Kratos is just cutting through them like butter. Zeus, sort out your priorities, you fucking moron. Searching for a way to raise the labyrinth and free Pandora from its heart, Kratos stumbles onto Hera and Hercules. Hera demands Hercules to kill Kratos and a demigod of Ace, wishing to kill Kratos and become the new god of war. After Hercules and Kratos battle for a while, Kratos kitty punches the older son of Zeus and takes his weapons, the Nemean Cestus, a pair of huge gauntlets shaped like lion's heads. Kratos then uses the gauntlets to mash Hercules' face to a pulp and press forward. He passes through the chambers of Poseidon and Aphrodite. No! I am not talking about the sex minigame. I have ignored them in all of my God of War reviews. So, if that's what you were hoping for, you're going to be disappointed. So, yeah, he passes through Aphrodite's chambers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To once again meet up with Hephaestus. I seek the labyrinth. I thought you sought only the flame. What could you possibly want in... No! Stay away from her! Stay away from Pandora, Kratos! You are the reason she is in the labyrinth! The reason I live here in hell! 
I have done you no wrong, Hephaestus. Oh, but you have, Spartan. You opened the box. I did what had to be done. Clearly, you don't understand. The evils of the Great War cannot easily be contained. I forged the box in a power greater than the gods themselves. The flame of Olympus. As the raw metal took shape, I realized the flame was the safest place to protect it. The lock was set. All that was needed was a key, a way to retrieve the box. Created from the very heart of the flame, the key took on a life of its own. Pandora. A child. Neither living nor dead. I grew to love her, Spartan. And she grew to love me as her father. When Zeus came to take the box, I hid Pandora away. I told him that storing the box on the back of Kronos would be the safest place. After all, who could best the Titan? I lied. I did it to save my child. Surely you can understand that. It was your triumph using the box that revealed my deceit. Zeus tortured me until I confessed the truth of my beloved Pandora. He took her away, leaving me alone in my torment. speaking, uh, Hephaestus didn't lie. If you take you still flame, need the Box of Olympus and a way to retrieve it, and by the way, the Flame of Olympus is a pretty important part of the God's powers. I mean, if you want it to destroy something, you might want to put it somewhere where you don't have to destroy your own seat of power, Zeus. I mean, you can't really chastise Kratos or Hephaestus. Kratos only did what he was told to, and besides, the gods helped him reach Pandora's box. I mean, I sure, Zeus, Aphrodite, and Poseidon gave their powers Surely to Kratos before he knew that. he had to find Pandora's box, but Where's even after they knew his plan was to get this holy fuck forbidden artifact, Artemis and Hades continued to help. It was your plan to defeat Ares using the box, guys, and Kratos most likely wouldn't have made it if the gods hadn't helped him. So in short, it was the best place to keep the box. No regular mortal would have had a chance at retrieving it, and... Even then, Kratos had help from the gods. The if Zeus wants to blame anyone for the defeat of Ares, but you have any reason to because they basically asked Kratos to do it, he should really blame himself and his fellow Olympians. The flame of Olympus. <sighs> okay, whatever. Santa Monica clearly had their heads in the sand when he wrote the script. Anyway, Hephaestus sends Kratos into Tartarus to find the materials for a new weapon. Once in the depths of the Great Pit, he finds himself in the hands of Kronos, banished there after Ares' defeat in God of War. I know I keep rambling about the boss fights in this game, but this next one is just fucking incredible! Kronos picks Kratos up in an effort to kill him to gain revenge for himself and avenge Gaia. However, Kratos blinds Kronos and begins to crawl over his body in attempts to find a way to kill him, before being swallowed by Kronos. Only briefly, however, as Kratos slashes Kronos open and spills his guts with the Blade of Olympus, and retrieving the necessary materials in the process, before stabbing him through the mouth with an obsidian nail, and finally killing him once and for all by stabbing him in the head, so this time with the Blade of Olympus. Take note, ladies and gentlemen. Kratos just demonstrated the little something I like to call KILLING A TITAN LIKE A MOTHERFUCKING BOSS! Kratos returns to Hephaestus who forges him the Nemesis Whip, before turning on him in an effort to protect Pandora. You silly sod! Kratos swiftly impales Hephaestus before moving on to Hera's puzzle guns. Within its maze-like structure he finds the Queen of Olympus and swiftly breaks her neck, spreading death to all the plant life in the gardens. Solving the puzzles, he finds Kratos presses forward and reaches the caverns once again. As he does, he finishes assembling the labyrinth and enters its complex halls, solving each of its puzzles and challenges until he reaches Pandora. Escaping the labyrinth together, Kratos plummets down to the base of the chain and frees it from its moorings, 
before he travels back to the Chamber of the Flame and lifts the labyrinth from the chasms. Pandora attempts to enter the flame and free the box, but Kratos, having grown attached to the girl, refuses, claiming he will find another way. I know at this point in God of War we come to respect Kratos as a ash-covered ball of pure rage and destruction, but uh, yeah, got nothing else to say. Other than the fact it is actually kind of nice to see that there is still some human elements there in him. In that moment of weakness, however, Zeus arrived. And then we transition from God of War into Mortal Kombat for some reason. Yeah, bizarrely enough, the first part of the battle with Zeus takes place on a two-dimensional plane. Odd. I mean, it's a cool fight, but why? Anyway, as the chamber disintegrates around them, Kratos beats Zeus to a bloody pulp. But when he isn't looking, Pandora attempts to throw herself into the fire. Holding on to her for all it's worth, both Pandora and Zeus plead with Kratos as to what he should do. In a fit of rage, as Zeus mentions Kratos' failure to spare his own daughter, Kratos lets Pandora go. The flame is destroyed and Kratos opens the box to reveal... Nothing! And that's what you get if you don't use your fucking mind! As Kratos and Zeus renew their battle outside, they are interrupted by the arrival of Gaia. As she attempts to crush them both, Kratos and Zeus leap inside her body and make battle inside Gaia's chest cavity. In a final bid for victory, Kratos pierces Gaia's heart through Zeus, apparently killing both of them. When Kratos goes to retrieve the blade of Olympus from the corpse of his father, the spirit of Zeus then rises and strikes Kratos down, destroying his weapons and leaving him powerless. As fear overcomes Kratos, he is consumed by the memories and darkness of the horrors he has done. This is a brilliant way to end the game. This small segment where Kratos confronts his fears and the nightmares that have haunted him is a brilliant final flourish to this great game as Kratos learns to accept the one thing that can banish the darkness of his fears. Hope. The great power Athena locked away in Pandora's box. And with that hope, Kratos can finally forgive himself for the horrors of his past. It also makes a really cool homage to the beginning slash end of the first God of War, where Kratos, having been given the first hope he had in years, lost it in his fear. Recovering his senses, Kratos begins to fight back against Zeus. In fearful day, in raging night, with strong hearts full our souls ignite, when all seems lost in a war of light, look to the stars, for hope burns bright! Totally didn't learn the Blue Lantern core oath off by heart. Really? I didn't. The Blades of Exile in hand once more, Kratos forces the spirit of Zeus back into his body before tossing the blades aside. Somehow, because those things are chained to his arms. Anyway, after tossing the blades aside, he beats Zeus to a red paste on the screen with his bare hands. And with that, Zeus finally dies. The end, however, it is not. Athena arrives and reveals it was her doing that put the power of hope in the box, and reveals when Kratos opened the box in the first game, the dark powers imprisoned there by Zeus infected the king of the gods, as Kratos gets the power of hope within himself. When Athena attempts to take the power back, however... You owe me this, Kratos. I owe you nothing. I made you a god. I sheltered you from the wrath of Olympus. I delivered your revenge on Zeus! It is over, Athena. You would dare strike me down? Again? My vengeance... ends now. How could you? Oh, for fuck's sake, Kratos. I mean, Jesus Christ, Kratos. Have you ever considered a different career path? I mean, the only time you have died, as far as I've seen, is when you've been stabbed. So maybe you should choose something other than being the god of war, so you don't end up dying so many times. Fucking hell. But, despite my jests, that's literally the end of God of War 3.
While it has been teased that the possibility of a sequel to God of War 3 and Ascension, there's no guarantee we'll ever see one. If we don't see any installments of the games, we can always hope that that long-awaited and teased God of War movie finally gets some headway and makes it to the silver screen. But as for God of War 3, it is by far the best one out there. Some brilliant boss battles, gorgeous quick turn events, and a final farewell to our beloved Spartan, God of War 3 is the best way to finish the tale of vengeance we've been playing for so many years. Is the story a little bit confusing? Yes. Is the motivation of God a little bit odd? Yes. But do we play it for the story? No. We play it for gratuitous violence. So for what God of War 3 gave us, in terms of an epic finale, a brilliant game and a final send off to our beloved Spartan, I think it deserves a dark rating of 93. I will have my revenge! But as always, if you have a suggestion for my next review, please drop it in the comment section below, share it with me on Twitter or Google+, tie it to the leg of a pigeon and send it to you that way. I don't care, just as long as it reaches me somehow. But while I'm here, I'm going to do a little bit of advertising. Remember the steampunk kid? If you haven't, please check out our Ghost Rider review, which is going to be here somewhere. And uh, check out his channel, because he's doing a new series of videos called, and I quote you, LOLs and shit. So if you want to see some of your nostalgic PS1 games being ripped apart, or just remembered honorably, check out his channel here. That's my advertisement done. Where's my 50 quid? But as always, I've been Darkest Timing 101. You have been watching Darkest 101 Reviews. Thanks for watching. Good night, YouTube.